Hello all, welcome to our uh, first session of uh, Art and Archi Architecture in July with Art Ravel. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, for those who don't know, today we'll be, we are actually here at the John Keel's head office where we, they have a brilliant collection of uh, amazing art and uh, we are hoping to show you all this, uh, a bit of the collection because it's too huge to show all of them. But we'll be showing a, a little bit of this amazing collection. Um, for those who don't know, we, this session is called A Friendly Keat, which is a little pun on, uh, because the, our main two artists are Donald Friend and George Keat. And um, we have a really special guest here with us who uh, knows much more about George Keat and Donald Friend than I do. Um, for those who couldn't uh, see our previous stories, uh, his name is Michael Anthony's and um, for some of you, he may you may know him as the swimming coach, and um, also he was a former record holder for Sri Lanka Swimming. Uh, he is a um, artist himself, which gives him a great amount of expertise. And his uh, most unique factor is that he is the chairman of the uh, George Keat Foundation of Sri Lanka, and um, I think he would he has an immense amount of knowledge. So uh, please welcome uh, Michael Anthony's, who will help take us around uh, to show the paintings. So Michael, how has it been? How have you been these days? Ah, well, it's been a bit uh, hectic <laughs> these days, but as you can imagine, we are sort of getting used to things now. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, you know, things are back to normal, but you know, Quite it's the same thing, but with a mask on. So. <laughs> yes, exactly, though we don't have a mask at the moment, but... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, One meter distance. <laughs> yes. Shall we uh, begin this uh, let's, art tour? Let's do uh, that. Tour? Come. Great. Fine. Sure. Please. So as we go in here to see the... Oh, before we do that, let's have a look at this. This is a beautiful piece here. Yeah, this sure. This old Petagama. This okay. is a traditional sort of storage box which uh, old families used to keep their various uh, sort of valuables. The family heirlooms are generally stored in these kind of boxes and you find some intricate work on it. Look at just look at the various uh, the copper work, the beautiful sort of designs which have been done. These must be dating back to about what 200, 300, or yeah. even more years than that. It's all brass work, if I'm not mistaken. Brass work on this, yes, and this uh, deep deep box with various things stored inside. So it was um, usually owned by um, old families who could who have a lot of valuables yes, to Yes, basically that keep, would have yeah. been how they would have kept them. So let's okay. go into the sure. foyer here and let's start with uh, the Donald Friend. It's a large painting. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I can capture the entire thing. So let me just uh, uh, go back and see. Let's. So this is work which uh, he had done. This was originally this painting of the Gaul Harbour, Gaul Fort and Harbour was originally at the Mackinnon's building on their sort of, uh, uh, as you walk the staircase on the landing, this was there and dominated that whole building virtually because those days, Mackinnon's was the uh, agents for the p &O line. And in fact, what uh, uh, Friend has depicted here is uh, amalgamation of various factors linking the whole story of the shipping lines together. Okay. If, for example, we go in detail here, we find a person peering through a telescope here, which depicts the manager, or the, who was there here in charge of the P&O office, and his family, and what's interesting also to see the way the missus is sitting down to tea, which is a, in the old days, that's how they all sat out and had, uh, you know, their tea on the, in the lawn, with uh, somebody waiting on them. And as we sort of step back a little bit, we can this, see... This uh, telescope is very peculiar. Is there a story behind it? Or? Well, it's, it's what was kept uh, in this office. And in fact, now we, this telescope is still retained at the uh, Mackinnon's building, I believe, is still there. I remember seeing it there at Mackinnon's many years ago. Okay. And in fact, the... Uh, well, let's look at the whole picture here. We find the whole golf fort is depicted. Right, but one interesting thing about uh, uh, Donald Friend's work, now he lived here, he actually met, the reason he's here is because he first of all met with Bevis Baba, 
um, when you're coming on a ship, I think he's coming from Italy or going to Italy, whichever way around. And Baby Sinbai didn't come and stay here in Sri Lanka. And he, I believe, came a few times. And then laterally he came, or his last visit really, before he went across uh, um, to Bali, was, uh, I think, from 57 to 42. Okay. So he was here for five years, basically. And he lived at Bevis's uh, bungalow and little estate, uh, which is called Brief, which is a beautiful garden with sculptures and various artworks and all there. Bevis himself used to collect, and Bevis himself used to do lots of artwork himself. Okay. He was a very talented cartoonist. Wow. And he depicted various, uh, various uh, personalities of the time in very sort of amusing little cartoons. His so, uh, country house is still available to visit as of now as well, right? Yes, brief the is, brief garden. That's okay. Right. It's in Bentota. Okay. Somewhere close to uh, uh, Jeffrey Baba's place also. The Lunuganga country estate. That's right, yes. In area. Okay. So, while he was here, uh, Donald Friend did a lot of work, and what one peculiar, well, one not peculiarity, but one method that he used, you can find that he is using different perspectives. Now, as an artist, okay. you know, you might, maybe you'll draw one sort of point of perspective, but in, in, uh, in Friends' case, you can see that all of the, the horizon line is there, the buildings are going up into the sky. Because yeah. what he has done is, he takes the different, different elements and puts them together to make the composition in total. And we see here, like, the whole picture of the Gaul fort. And what's interesting also is out here you find the bullock carts. Now, that is something they used to use those days to transport tea from the estates, the bullock carts, and also, uh, so the, you know, and, and okay, uh, they transport the, the tea and the various produce, and this depicts the big, uh, which is now the Maritime Museum, I believe, in Gold okay. Fort. This is where the uh, storage facilities was for the Indian Dutch time. And this is where they used to, in fact, bring down the various uh, produce from Indonesia and all over, wherever they had their colonies and store it here and then ship it across from here to Holland. Okay. So basically the bullock carts and also interestingly you find the little rickshaw, rickshaw uh, coolies where you know people are sitting on this rickshaw I mean, they're running along perhaps they're almost having a race there <laughs> as they're going along that way is. So this is basically the early times of the uh, commonly known tuk-tuks of Colombo. Yeah, before we had the tuk-tuks and those kind of things <laughs> you see. And so the entrance to the, and interestingly enough Okay, this is the entrance to the Gaul Fort, and right here, where it's of course not depicted, yeah. in front is where we have the cricket grounds, which is, I think, now been recently been voted as one of the top six cricket grounds in the world. Yeah, okay. It's right in front of the fort here. So, so many going, brilliant games have been played in the ground. <laughs> and it's very picturesque also, because yeah. we have the, the fort at the background. And we go into the fort and find different, different uh, things he's taken and put together. You find the, three, the, the different religions represented here. There is the old Dutch Reformed Church, the first a uh, Dutch Reformed Church put up in 17-something, I believe. Then there's the uh, Anglican Church, which is depicted there. And then we find the, uh, the Buddhist temple here and the mosque depicted there. You find all these religions coexisting very peacefully and harmoniously inside the fort. And also he's taken certain landmark buildings. As I said earlier, the, 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 uh, the warehouses there. We also find Next to the church is the Amangala uh, Hotel, and this is the museum here. And going around the corner here, you find this would be what is now the, the, the Dutch hospital. Okay. Restaurant and all that is there, the lighthouse. And of course, the clock tower, which uh, uh, I'm proud to say is called, known commonly as the Anthony's clock tower. Okay. Because it's put up in memory of my great-grandfather's brother who was a doctor who stayed behind during a, a pandemic at that time also. I think it was a smallpox pandemic. And stayed behind to look after the people where everyone else sort of more or less left the, left the fort. And uh, also he sort of also was responsible for looking after the, the maintaining the, 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 the building and when they had wanted to sort of destroy the fort, he had protested against it and, and kept it. So that's one reason they held it up there. And we find the fort, the, the fort here basically, and the, uh, what is depicting is the days of the sailing vessels, okay, when the early times. And over here you find uh, Klosenberg Hotel, which is also an old building, I believe it belongs to the Dutch period also, right on top of this hill out there. And on that hill, on the way up to that hill is where they have the, had the piano office. 
So that is depicting the whole story there. And what interestingly enough here we see, interestingly enough here we see the intricate work which has drawn into this building, which you still find this kind of gables and all this kind of work in some of the old uh, uh, walaus or bungalows. And as we also on the side here, he has taken various little snippets of Sri Lankan life and and uh, the animals and all those depicted. Uh, family going somewhere in their cart, bullock drawn cart. And uh, also, this is very interesting. Now here we find uh, what you call a Vati Ame. Those days we didn't have these supermarkets and all that, right? But basically we had the, the uh, groceries were brought to you or the vegetables brought to you by this lady this, with, with a basket on her head with all the fruit inside that. Yeah. And she comes to each house and sells it from there and he's depicting that here. And this would be a, a, a man who used to go around selling the uh, a Bombay Muttai, a sweet which they used a to... A sugary kind of food. Yeah. yeah. And similarly on the other side also we have different scenes of various uh, snippets of Sri Lankan life. The, the leopards, the monkeys, a bullock cart again, a scene from what you get in the temples, a king and queen on the elephant back, uh, fishing boats going out, a lot of fishing going around, and a village hut, and the deer. And as we step back, and look at the whole painting, one thing which you notice is that uh, what Donald Trump has done is, in order to keep your eye active, rather than just focusing on one single point, he's a little bits of this orange bright color, even on the leaves of the tree, even on the doggy, you know, uh, little bits of bright orange, so your eye gets used to looking at the whole scene rather than just focusing on one little point. It draws your eye right across, even on the boats or the ships, you find on the roofs that orange color. In order to keep your mind, your eyes, sort of, to view the whole painting rather than just focus on one little point. Okay, all right. And that is friend, and then we come to the key collection. Let's start off from this one, which is Founding, founding uh, Paddy. Uh, one thing you find with Keith's work is that he maintains a harmony amongst his work. There's a rhythm to the work. Now, even on this one, he's got the, the harmony with these, perhaps these straight lines. Okay. So the whole thing links together. And his use of color, the white, the white, the white, the white. So the whole thing is a balance of different colors. And this is a picture of a family, a farmer, and the mother and the wife is found in the paddy. Then we come to an interesting, this is, this is all, the collection really is what we got down from. The George Keat Foundation is a collection which was with Martin Russell in London. And then uh, when they could, were not able to ship it down, I think Martin Russell had passed away and they all kept in storage and we bought down. And uh, luckily, one of the former directors of Keels, uh, Mr. Leaf, I believe his name is, uh, Mr. Valinder, who was chairman then, he was able to contact him and get it shipped down to us so that we were able to get this whole collection brought back or it was just in a storage warehouse somewhere. Okay, all right. So that's how we got this whole collection done. All are basically from 52, they were taken across to, to London for an exhibition, but they were not able to ship it back for some reason. So coming back to uh, uh, George Keith's work, uh, like in the uh, late 20s, 1920s, 30s, uh, he and a few of our other local artists who were trying to break away from the traditional uh, Victorian kind of very traditional artworks and being influenced by what they see around them because we've got a wide long history of art from the temple paintings and the old uh, Seagate frescoes and all yeah. that. <clears throat> trying to bring that into everyday art and uh, uh, they had a chance to also view the works of uh, Picasso, Braque, Matisse and all those where people brought down reproductions. And that, I think to a large extent, Keith found that he was on the same sort of wavelength as Picasso and, and, and Braque okay. on the Cubist lines. Because right. anyway, Keith tended to always have a sort of fluidity to his lines and link up his pictures with a, with a strong lines. And here is a, a picture which is sort of almost, I would say almost typical. Uh, Cubist work of uh, uh, Picasso-like work. You can compare it very well with that. Where he's taken 
the a vase and just flattened it out and just even the the perspective of the the table is just taken and put the elements together and the light that's coming through is a it's called wild flowers but painted in 45 I believe by Keat but it's a beautiful rendition of a sort of cubist uh, um, still life and here we have another one also in the early 40s which is a Keat did a whole series of Nika paintings depicting uh, his wife at that time, his second wife, uh, Manike, and these are, uh, he depicted her in a series of works, and this, I believe, also sort of goes on to pre uh, present her with perhaps a friend. And what's also interesting in Keith's work, many of his works, you, you could see it as being the sort of uh, side view perspective, but at the same time, he brings in the rest of the face also. Okay. So that's an interesting, and you see the lines, the continuity of lines, which is maybe more apparent in the next painting. which is the uh, Lasaya, Lasya dance or something. It's, it's, a, it's a dance, Lasya dance. It's a sort of traditional uh, sort of dance. Uh, and you find also like the Lord Krishna in the background. And I believe it's a certain kind of a dance which they do. But an Indian in, dance. An Indian dance. But you see the, the line which Keith emphasizes, the line and the flow of it. So the whole uh, sort of paintings, you find all his paintings sort of um, have a continuity to them. There's no, you know, uh, stop and start sort of thing. You find his work just as a lovely continuity of it. Another characteristic of his work you find is these very sharp triangular mm -hmm. noses and sort of almond-shaped eyes. All his sort of figures tend to have that. And with the, the drum and the beat, you know, the flute player, the drum. Okay. And the next one we come to is... a. Uh, painting of a Candian bride. Now here you find uh, he's taken the Candian costumes. He's take, for example, look at the, the, the bridegroom. He has that uh, sort of traditional... Uh, the hat that hat is worn by Candian uh, right. people, yeah. And the, the big sleeves, which the first costume they wear, and sort of like a long sarong. All right. Just, and and the, the bride also has a lot of uh, jewelry on the head, and uh, the, the kind of sari she's wearing also. The, oh, sorry. Yeah, a, the, the, the Candian. Uh, uh, That's right, the Candian, Candian style. Sari, yeah. And of course, the 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 couple are greeted with the drum beat and all that. We find the, the which is drummer a there. I suppose is a uh, usual setting in a Candian or Sri Lankan wedding. To a very large extent, yes. So the whole thing again, we find it's blending beautifully. And what's interesting also, uh, Keith spent a lot of time. He he grew up in Candy, and he spent a lot of time with the Buddhist priest who he had befriended and studied Buddhism and he was uh, very much into studying all the, the old artwork and all that and you find that in lots of the old temples you find that the background is a sort of a reddish maroon kind of color and that's sort of he uses that to a large extent in his work as a background. Okay. So what they have been trying to do, Keith and others also of that era were trying to merge the modern day art with the old traditional art and make it Sri Lankan art basically. Okay. Give the Sri Lankan flavor. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. This is another uh, one of an Indian sort of music, Indian dance form. Again, hmm? Again we find the drummer and the ladies wearing the sort of traditional um, Sri Lankan so okay, sorry. all right. The Osiria you can see. Yeah. yeah. It's also, I suppose, in a Candian setting with the um, the Gatterberry, if I'm not mistaken, that has been depicted here, which is a, a Candian uh, uh, instrument yeah, from a Candian of, origin. Because, because he based himself in Candy, so a lot of the Candian influence kept, kept coming across into his work. Okay. Unlike, unlike you know, coming into doing works in Colombo as such, he had used all Candian traditional work and all that was coming out in his work continuously, which is what makes his work actually unique in that sense. Okay. That actually, in a way, I think that depicts what is sort of, uh, from the title, depicts a rain dance. Oh, okay. Different types of dance that they had for different uh, all right. uh, times of... And this one I believe is called uh, 
Pratama Milna, maybe the sort of, I think, depicting uh, a young girl attainment of age, perhaps. And I think there again, the custom is that, you know, um, the, some of the um, old clothes or whatever given across to uh, an elder or maybe okay. a, a midwife, midwife or I suppose, yeah. someone. And that's, I think, what is depicted here in this painting. But again, you see that the, the lines and all that, the way he's, like, you know, for example, this seat behind her continues straight through into her sleeve, into that. The continuity of the lines, the line, yeah? yeah, which is a hallmark of his work, so that your whole, the whole painting is, is linked together. Okay, all right. And this one is Threshing, threshing uh, Paddy, basically a picture of the harvest, and you can see the, the sort of husk being thrown up into the sky here. Okay. And it's, it's like a, 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 a field, you know, with, the, with the cow there, and maybe this is the taller paddy down here. And uh, maybe the, whatever they use, the broom or whatever it is to... The hop. usual uh, setting in a, a Sri Lankan village of uh, a traditional harvesting of... Because I suppose Sri Lanka is a very... Um, is a country that was always... Um, that yeah. depends on agriculture. Yes, so uh, most villagers always have paddy cultivations and everything. So it's right. a, a normal setting that goes on. And I believe that's exactly what he's trying to uh, depict. depict yeah, uh, yeah. Common sight in Sri Lanka. Correct. Correct. Ah, and now here, what we have here is a painting by Gami Ratnavira. Now he is a internationally known artist, basically for wildlife paintings and uh, and birds and all that. He is staged, uh, he is presently in uh, America. He's been there for many years. And this is just one example of, of a kestrel, which he has done. And in fact, it's one of a series of paintings which are uh, adorning the Hubbard Lodge Hotel. Cinnamon Lodge. Sorry, Cinnamon Lodge at, at Hubbard. Uh, yes. Right? At, uh, this is one of the key hotels. And uh, each of the rooms has a painting of done by Gamini. Okay. And they have a collection of about 140, I believe it's about 140 rooms. And uh, each of them has one of these unique paintings depicting our Sri Lankan birds or like animals, like the monkeys and leopards. And okay, whatever. all right. And as we come through, two more paintings by Keith. This is of, uh, was actually a very interesting story here. It's called the Omo Girl because this lady came to sell some Omo washing powder and then Keith got her to sit for him quickly and did this painting of a girl with a mirror. Okay. And this is again, once you see, once again, the very defined noses, another painting by Keith, a more recent one, 82, called Friends. Okay. And as we come over here, we find a painting which was commissioned from Donald Friend, another one of Donald Friend's works, commissioned directly by uh, David Blackler, who was a uh, former chairman here. And it depicts, depicts the tea trade. Because basically, uh, John, it was acquired by John Gilbert, the other one was a McKinnon's acquisition, which is a shipping company. This was acquired by John Keyes, and so what he has done is, is, is depicts the whole, the port of Colombo, or the city of Colombo, right, with special little uh, detailed focus on the tea trade and, and those involved in the tea trade. It starts off here, for example, with uh, uh, employee or executive or uh, executive of the tea trade who, and those days are very common to see them wearing these pit helmets okay and coming along in a rickshaw again a rickshaw pulling him and coming along to work and you find this here the picture of the uh, clock tower which is on york street which actually was originally a lighthouse and in fact it's, it's apparently the only lighthouse which is in the center of a city so this is a picture of the uh, the usual team. daily uh, routine of a person who works at an office the, in Colombo. In Colombo, because those is actually, as I said earlier, 
you know, you didn't have the tuk tuk so any yeah. taxis around. The, the, these uh, rickshaw men who took carried the fellows around. I suppose even uh, these days is the same setting but with more modern technology that goes on. <laughs> Nothing's really changed. <laughs> and here's a depiction of the tea trade, uh, the, the the tea auction rather, and the auctioneer and the different uh, brokers sitting around the tables. And of course, the tea industry started here because of the British influence, and so. Here we have Britannia, as depicted from the old Roman days. Britannia sitting on her chariot with her trident and and her shield, and uh, you know being shown. Okay, a, That's a, a map, map of, of Sri Lanka, of, right? Uh, Ceylon. Ceylon back then. In the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> and here we have a, a view of uh, the planter's bungalow, sitting out and having a cup of tea, with a nice view of the hills around them, because all the that bungalows do they had the veranda, and so we come to the city of Colombo. We find various views here of various. Uh, as I said earlier, also in the other painting, uh, friend just removes perspective. Now here you find this is the golf is green, but it's going up into the into the sky here basically. And this yeah. is the golf is hotel, and the uh, jetty. And again, that uh, the the lighthouse and what is our first skyscraper, which is like ten stories high, <laughs> okay, the Selinko Tower, and the famous uh, red red mosque in the Peta, and various other scenes around, which he has taken and So this, if I'm not mistaken, is the uh, municipal council, commonly known as the <clears throat> town hall. That's right. But uh, it also has a. Uh, really close resemblance to the White House in America. Yeah, but this is our White House. <laughs> <laughs> right. And also what you find is, uh, which I forgot to mention on the other side, that uh, uh, what friend uh, uses as his sort of backdrop to his work is the gold leaf. So even the other painting is what I notice is lined with the gold leaf and even these, if not mistaken, yes, is gold leaf. And the gold leaf from the skyline there just to bring it everything out, highlight it. And what's interesting is also, as I said, like the different little details of Possibly, because those days, from, even from the fort, you could see Adam's Peak. There's not so much pollution around, so possibly this is a depiction of Adam's Peak he's showing over here. Not too sure about that, possibly. And this would be the clock tower, which is, uh, as you go into the Peta, you find this clock tower. And this is now earlier painting of the golf fort had the, the sailing boats. This is the steamships. And interestingly enough, this row of houses here, it would be along what we call reclamation road, which was actually land that was reclaimed during the uh, British period, and the uh, sort of exclusive villas were here. Now, of course, these are all shop shops. And as we go along, this is the Mackinnon's building, picture of that, and the uh, Grand Jewish, Oriental Hotel, the Grand Oriental Hotel, and um, the steamerships. I suppose when you look at the two. Um, Paintings, you can see a clear difference of uh, Gaul and Colombo. The fact that this is more commercial, the more modern technology was that is more traditional. Yeah, exactly. Older, yeah, taking back. But the ideas. art style itself is uh, very uh, similar to the. The two Both have the two. a very similarity between yeah. them. In fact, there's a similar one. A big painting he had done, a mural we had done at at Bevis's place, also on the wall, okay. depicting Bevis and his uh, surroundings and all that which uh, unfortunately was getting bad damage away. They have restored it now, uh, which is again a lovely mural which uh, a friend had done. And as we go from here... Let me just give one last look of this brilliant painting. So, um, are we, I think we're moving on to the next uh, George Keat painting, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and this is the largest one once again. It depicts a, a Indian dance form. Once again, you see the continuity of his line as it comes all the way from here, all the way there, up there, linking everything together, and a sitar player here. So this depicts, depicts uh, another painting of uh, uh, Indian style work and also you find that this, uh, this, the lady is wearing an Indian style sari if I'm not mistaken. Okay. 
and the sita on the side that uh, that's right depicts a lot of indian uh, influence in the painting itself correct because keith spent a lot of time in india also and is very very taken up with the indian influences and all that so that uh, he would focus a lot on the the, the local uh, sort of sri lankan aspects of things traditional work and the indian traditional narratives and uh, mythology okay i suppose this is our final painting for the day if i'm not my if i'm not mistaken my yes i think we we'll, we'll stop with this now <laughs> we we'll cover the quick round of yeah i suppose we have uh, we don't have much of time to go through everything because like i said going through uh, the whole um, uh, going through the whole uh, collection we'll have uh, we won't have too much of time to uh, go through everything um anyway uh, thank you so much um, mike for joining us today you're welcome and <laughs> one meter distance um yes. anyway thank you so much for uh, joining joining us today and uh, My pleasure. being My a pleasure. part of the uh, first session of um, uh, art and architecture july uh, please join us next week for our second session which would be um, more co- uh, more prominent uh, giving more prominence to Jeffrey Bauer as it's his 101st birthday next week so please stay tuned on to the archival profile where we'll be keeping you keep we'll keep you updated on what's uh, yet to come uh, please stay tuned we have a lot in store for you uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, bye i thought you said i prefer